the ecological footprint. In this video, we answer the questions, what is the ecological footprint? What does it include? And what does the global ecological footprint tell us about global sustainability? If we wanted to determine the carrying capacity of the entire Earth, we need to look more closely at the terms in the equation. This equation reminds us that the carrying capacity of the Earth in a one-year period can be found by taking the total stock of resources produced in a year and dividing it by the average resources consumed per person. Another way of thinking about this computation is that the number of people that the Earth can support is the total supply of resources divided by the demand of resources per person. Let's just look at the resource consumption per person. If we consider just two different geographical regions, we see that the resources consumed per person are very different. And what about the wastes that are generated? Those must also be processed by the land. So this term of resource consumption per person includes resources for both producing the life support systems and processing the waste streams. Now let's look at the total supply of resources. In simple terms, the supply would equal the annual bioproductivity per land of bioproductive land times the area of that land. That seems simple enough, except that we must remember that the different types of land produce different types of resources, and the bioproductivity will vary with the health of the land. You can see that computing the annual carrying capacity of the whole Earth can be rather complex. A group of researchers developed a new method to compute the carrying capacity of the Earth. It's called the ecological footprint. In this method, the Earth is divided into types of bioproductive land. The image depicted here shows the annual bioproductive flows. The arrows in this image indicates the flow of Earth's primary products from cropland, forest, grazing land, and fisheries. These products are annually consumed. The act of consuming these products does result in carbon dioxide, which is the primary waste that is accounted for in the ecological footprint. That carbon dioxide as the waste is resorbed by the Earth's systems. Here's another look at the cycle that contributes to the ecological footprint computation. So as before, the Earth is divided up into four different types of bioproductive land. Those lands result in products that are consumed by humans, and that consumption produces CO2 as a waste stream that is reabsorbed by the land and the water, and also emits toxins that impair the bioproductivity of the Earth. This dashed line also indicates that there can be a change of land use that reduces the bioproductivity of the total Earth if that land use is converted to, say, something like um, urban areas rather than having an agricultural use. So essentially, the slide depicts the flows of the primary resources in wastes within the ecological footprint computation. Note that the ecological footprint is essentially an accounting method based on conservation of mass. So the ecological footprint computation looks something like this. For a basis of analysis of one year, you have the footprint per person measured in hectares equal to the consumption in kilograms per person times the resource and waste intensity of the consumption. That's essentially hectares needed per kilogram of consumption. The key things to know about the footprint are that it only tracks the flow of organic goods. Man-made synthetic goods and fossil fuels are only considered in the computation of CO2 as waste. It uses land area to produce goods or absorb CO2 as the universal accounting measure. Ecological footprint is literally an area, bioproductive land, that is needed to produce the goods and absorb the waste associated with a, a time frame of one year and one person. Let's get back to our original question. How many people can the Earth support? With the ecological footprint, we can answer this question. The ecological footprint uses data from intergovernmental agencies, so the data is grouped by nation state. Some nations are creditors, meaning they produce and supply more land than what they demand, and some are debtors, which means that they demand more than they produce. 
if we look at the United States, for example, we can see that over time, the United States has transitioned from a creditor in the 1960s to a debtor in the current day. When all the nations are taken together, we get a sense of the global picture. As shown in this diagram, based on data from 2005, the global picture shows that the global ecological footprint exceeds the global biocapacity. That is, there is a gap between the, what the Earth is able to produce and what is needed to supply our consumption and process our wastes. This gap is called overshoot. Every year since the 1980s, we have needed more than one Earth supply of bioproductive land to meet the demand. Of course, this is not possible as far as we know. So how can we demand more than one Earth's supply? When you look more closely at the numbers, you discover that the overshoot is almost entirely due to the fact that we are globally producing more carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels than what the Earth can assimilate. This results in an accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere because we do not have more than one Earth for this demand. So obviously what's needed is a shift in the human activity so that we can bring the demand and supply into balance. The ecological footprint is the area of bioproductive land needed to provide the agricultural goods and absorb CO2 waste produced by a human's annual lifestyle. CO2 is the only waste considered in the calculation. The ecological footprint method is therefore an incomplete model like all models. The global population has been in a state of demanding more bioproductive land than is globally available since the 1980s. The net effect is the accumulation of atmospheric CO2 leading to global climate change. In the other sustainability learning suite videos, we will lay out strategies for transitioning to a balanced state.